their chairs are super expensive. But this one, this one I built with five two by fours. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm super excited because I finished up these patio chairs and I saved myself a boatload of money. So there was a chair I found online that kind of inspired me to make this design. And looking at the price of it, I was just astounded by how much money it was. Obviously, being a woodworker, I'm not gonna purchase that. I'm gonna make my own. And I found a way to do it for super cheap. The frame of the whole chair is made from five two by fours, but I found a way to kind of tie it in with that one I found online and kind of make it look sleek. So it doesn't look too two by four y. It's just got a really nice classy look and it's pretty easy to build as well. I do have extremely detailed plans available. I'll link them in the description. As far as my case in this chair goes, I did use my jointer and planer, but this design can be used with just straight two by fours. You do not need a planer or jointer. Uh, and you probably don't even need a table saw. You could probably just make your angled cuts on a miter saw or even a hand saw if you're patient. You can just follow along with the video or the plans and just skip the planing and jointing steps. Your finished product is gonna be a little chunkier and might look a little two by four-y, but that's all right. As of right now, a two by four by eight is $3.25. So for about 20 bucks, including the screws and everything, you can make the base of the chair. Another thing that's kind of expensive is cushions. These will fit any 24 by 24 inch cushions. I think this set right here was 60 bucks. I can link them below. So let's jump into this. I'm gonna show you exactly how I made this. All right, guys, I got five two by four by eights here. This is gonna make up the patio chair. So what I'm gonna do now is get these down to smaller lengths. These aren't gonna be final dimensions, but it's a lot easier to work with. You can break them down into rough, wild lengths. So I need to cut two of them at 28 and a half inches. 13 of them at 25 inches, two of them at 20 inches, and two of them at 16 inches. So I'm just gonna break that down on the chop saw. And as always, even when I'm rough cutting, I always cut off the factory edge just to give me a nice square clean cut. And in the plans that I have available, I will have an optimized cut list if you're looking to maximize the lumber. But if you're just cutting this out of scrap two by fours that you got around the shop, Obviously you won't need an optimized cut list. It's just optimized for specific two by four by eight lumber. All right, next step, we're over at the jointer. Now, you do not need a jointer and a planer for this project. I'm simply doing it because I have it, but you can get away with not doing this. Just skip to the next chapter and go from there. As for me, I'm gonna be jointing a face as well as one edge on the jointer of all the boards. Alrighty guys, now we're over here at the table saw and all I'm gonna do is with your jointed face down and your jointed edge against the fence, I got my fence set to three and a quarter and I'm just gonna rip them all through. Obviously, if you don't have a jointer and a planer, just set it to three and a quarter and rip them through. They should be straight enough to make them work. And actually, if you don't have a table saw, you could probably just do it without it. Your finished product is just gonna be a little more chunky looking, which the cushion should cover up most of that anyway. It can possibly probably be done without a table saw as well. So whenever I work with two by fours, I always like to take the rounded edges off. As you can tell from my past videos of working with two by fours, it's just an unappealing look to me and I really like to square them up. So as I said, I run them through with the fence set at three and a quarter. And then on the way back through, I set my squared upside against the fence and cut it to a final width of three inches. All right, guys, now we're over at the planer. I'm gonna start first with the shorter lengths. So the 16 inch and the 20 inch lengths, I'm gonna plane down, but I'm only going to plane them down to an inch and three eighths. So I'm not going to take much off, only about an eighth inch. Then you're going to take your remaining lengths, which are going to be the two at 28 and a half and your 13 at 25 inches. 
and you're gonna spend a little bit of time with the planer and you're gonna get them all down to an inch and an eighth thick. As I said, you don't need a planer or jointer for this. You can keep these all an inch and a half thick. It's just gonna be a chunkier finished product. So when I'm planing these, especially two by fours, I like to take just light passes. The knots in the two by fours will tend to tear out as well as just some of the soft fibers of the wood. It'll tear out and look like crap. So just take light passes and it actually comes out pretty smooth and turns out pretty good. Before I get down to the exact final thickness, I do flip all the boards over. My planer tends to give a lot better finish than my jointer does. So I like to have both sides finished on the planer. All right, everything's prepped and we're ready to cut them to length. So for starters, we'll start with the easy ones. Take eight of your 25 inch lengths and simply cut these down to 24 inches. I'm using my miter saw for these cuts just because I know my crosscut slot is dead accurate, but a miter saw can be used here as well. These eight pieces cut to 24 inches will make up your back slats as well as the bottom seat portion slats. So this is gonna be where the cushion is gonna rest on, on the back as well as the bottom. Okay, now take two more of your 25 inch pieces and you're gonna cut these down to 23 inches. These ones cut down to 23 inches will make up your front legs. All right, now we need to take one more of the 25 inch pieces and it's gonna get cut down to 24 inches as well as get ripped down to two and a half inches wide rather than three inches. So you wanna take a half inch off and cut it down to 24 inch length. This would have made a lot more sense to cut this at the same time as the other 24 inch lengths before switching the fence to 23 inches and now back to 24, but you live and you learn. This one ripped down to two and a half inches, 24 inches long is gonna be your front seat stretcher. All right, now we'll take the longer lengths that are cut to 28 and a half inches. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna square up one end. I'm gonna measure 28 inches and I'm gonna cut it at a 17 degree angle. So at 28 inches, that's gonna be your longest point. Okay, so at your miter saw, I squared up that end, measured 28 here, shifted by a miter saw 17 degrees this way so that the 28 is gonna be your long point. So then it'll look like that. You're gonna to wanna to do that on both of them. All right, the last of your 25 inch length rough cuts, inch and an eighth thick. These are gonna be the side stretchers. These are gonna have an angle on them as well. So let's bring you over here and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so for these side stretchers, I squared up these and I'm gonna cut these together because they're identical. So squared up this end, measured, made a mark down here at 24 and 11 sixteenths, and that's gonna be your long point. Set this to 17 degrees and make the cut. All right, lastly, we've got our thicker one and three eighths inch thick pieces. We got the 16 inchers and 20 inchers. So start with your 20 inchers. These are gonna be your back uprights. All we're gonna do is make a square cut here. So true that up on your saw. Okay, so we're squared up there. All right, and then measure obviously from your squared up side and measure 19 and an eighth. Okay, so that 19 and an eighth is gonna be your long point. So you're gonna cut it at a 17 degree angle down like this making sure your long points at 19 and an eighth. Okay, with my saw still set at the 17 degree angle, take your remaining pieces, make a cut like this. 
Okay, and then measure from your long point down to here, and it's gonna be 14 and 5 16 I've got my fence set to that, but just make sure that long point to this point, this cut here is 14 5 16 So it's gonna look like this. You're measuring from here, 14 and 5 16 to the short point over here. All right, our cart lengths are all set. I like to go through and give everything a sanding. And another thing I like to do is get the sharp edges too. You can either do that with a router or a sander. So I'll just sand the edges and give them a little chamfer as I'm sanding. So I will do a final sanding once the chair is assembled before I finish it. But I do the brunt of my sanding right now while it's in pieces. It's just a lot easier, especially to get around the sharp edges. I just give it a light sanding using 120 grit. For outdoor furniture, I feel like 120 grit is perfectly fine to get them sanded smooth. All right, everything's cut, everything's ready to start assembling. So what I start with is your thicker pieces. Your shorter, thicker pieces are gonna be your back leg. And then, so you grab one of them and grab one of your longer, thicker pieces. These are gonna go together like this. This is gonna kinda make up like the backrest of your chair as well as the back leg. So you gotta find a way to put these together. You can use pocket holes, um, but the thing with pocket holes is they're gonna be visible. So you can plug them if you wanna go that route. I'm going to use my domino because that's the best option for me for invisible joinery. Um, but the, a much cheaper alternative to that would be dowels for this. So. Alright, so if you're doing this with pocket holes, obviously you won't need to worry about clamping it. But as you know, clamping angles are kind of tough. But what I do is... Okay, so I got a liberal amount of glue on the inside of the mortises, as well on the outside on the end grain. And I'm just gonna push this in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I wanna clean up some of this excess glue. They knew there was gonna be some squeeze out. Good old painter's tape. All you want to do is kind of wrap it around right here, hold it together like that, and then wrap it around, and that'll be enough to hold it. Let that sit out to dry. Then you just repeat that on the other two. All right, another connection I like to make with hidden joinery is this is going to be your front leg and this is the armrest. So this is going to go on here. Now, if you don't have a way to do hidden joinery, once again, this can be pocket holes and you're going to want to drill up into here. It's not ideal, but it'll work. So this is your armrest. This is going to connect to your back uprights. But first, I like to get this connected with hidden joinery. So I'm gonna use my domino for this again on both of them. Just make sure however you're gonna make this joint, whether it's pocket holes, whether it's dowels, make sure you're gluing it up the right way so that this is your front leg and your armrest angle, the long point is facing up. You don't wanna to get to where you gotta make that connection and figure out that that's wrong. All right, I gave those joints overnight for the glue to dry, especially the ones that were at an angle that I just painters taped together. I really wanted to give them overnight just to strengthen because that's a pretty weak joint until that domino strengthens. So now we're gonna start with our pocket hole joinery, which we're gonna wanna put in each end of the side aprons. These are the ones with the the cut angle here and the flat end on that side. 
a narrow one at 24 inches, the narrow one that you've ripped down to two and a half, and then one of your 24 inch pieces that's a full three inch width is gonna get pocket holes as well. So these four drill pocket holes on each end of them. All right, now you're gonna to wanna to take the piece that I had painters taped up. So basically this is, the shorter piece here is your back leg. So that's gonna sit like that and that's gonna be the, the side of your chair. And then this piece right here is gonna be the side stretcher. So that's gonna go right here like that. So you're just gonna to wanna to pocket hole that to there. Oh, okay, bud. There it is, there. Nice, dude. Oh, hi, butterfly. Okay, so I'm making sure it's flush out here. And then you're going to want to bring it up right even with where this joint makes contact with each other. All right, and then from this assembly, we're gonna mark where we gotta attach the armrest. So you're gonna measure up from right here, nine and three quarters. Okay, so a line nine and three quarters up from this joint here. And I'm gonna put an X on this side. This is where the armrest has gotta go. So this line references the bottom of the armrest. All right, now we're gonna mark where that side stretcher connects to the front leg. So these are my two assemblies with the front legs and the armrests. So I put them together, make sure they're flush down here on the bottom of the legs. Measure up 10 and 11 sixteenths. Make a mark, then take a speed square and just transfer that mark right across. Put an X up here because that line is going to be the bottom where your stretcher connects. All right, now you're going to want to bring these two together. This is a little bit of a tricky glue up, just getting everything lined up, but it's not too bad. So you're going to want to glue up here on the side stretcher as well as the angled part of the armrest. So basically all you do is line up where you made those marks. I like to use this to clamp it. Okay, once you're lined up, just pocket hole it in there. Then the armrest part, I just put it right on that line and I don't clamp it, I just hold it there and screw it in. And then there you go, there's one side of your chair. And just repeat that on the other side. Okay, then you're gonna wanna take your three Backrest, they're, they're three full size widths, so three of them at three inches wide, 24 inches long. And this is gonna be the backrests. You can use pocket holes. These are the last three that I'm gonna use hidden joinery, so I'm using my domino joiner again. But if you only have a pocket hole jig you're building this with, you can use that as well. I would just put the pocket holes in the front because the cushion's gonna cover that. Uh, before I clamp it, I like to set it on a nice level surface. I don't really have the most level shop floor, but it's better than nothing. And I just equally space them. I'll have exact dimensions where I put them in the plans, and then glue and clamp them up. Alright guys, now I'm taking my two and a half wide inch piece, and it's going to get mounted on the bottom of these. So it's going to be flush with the bottom of them. So it's your front narrow stretcher. Just make sure it's flush on the bottom. I'm gonna glue and screw it in there. It's starting to look like a chair here, huh, dude? Mm -hmm. All right, it's another thing worth mentioning since your supports and uprights here were an inch and three eighths thick, and these ones we planed down to an inch and an eighth you're gonna to wanna to center them in there. So there's gonna be an eighth inch reveal on each side. Now the last one you're gonna to wanna to take is your back apron piece. This is the 24 inch long. And this is gonna get pocket hold 
right here. So you're gonna wanna pocket hole it from the inside, flush up to here, so it matches the rest of your aprons. Dude, what the heck did you do with my drill? <laughs> Trying to build a chair here. I was looking for that. God darn kids. Alrighty, now all you should have left is four at 24 inches long, and you probably guessed what these are. They're gonna be your seat slat supports. Now to put these in, you can put pocket holes in and just support them that way. What I've opted to do is, I put these slat supports in. All it is is an inch and a half. So what I did was I just ripped one of the scrap two by fours from our cutoffs from earlier. And I just ripped them into three quarter inch strips and then kind of spliced it in here. And then another thing is, these are exactly 24 inches. You might need to take about a 16th of an inch off or so just so they fit in here nicely. So now what I'll do is just place these in here, evenly spaced, and I'll probably just glue them. So then I don't have to mess around with putting the pocket holes in. And then if you want to, the glue will probably just be fine and be enough, but you can come up from underneath the support and fasten these down with screws. Alrighty guys, I just got a mixture of Thompson's water seal as well as some Minwax stain that I'm finishing these with. Just to seal them up. Uh, Provincial is the stain I used. And just brushed that on pretty heavy, let it sit for a minute, and then wiped it off a little bit with a towel. Now I will say, just be sure to give your final sanding. Just do that thoroughly, because upon putting on finish, there was a couple spots where I didn't clean up the glue and didn't really stay, take the stain too well. But there you have it guys, if you guys follow along, build one for yourself, be sure to email me pictures, I'd love to see them. If you decide to support the channel and purchase the plans, thank you, hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I got another one queued up for you right here, and I'll catch you in the next video.